Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is baby or wedding, and I am going to take this opportunity to show a technique that's been on my list for a while, which is to use the iron fence pop-up as a rainbow by putting strips of paper over the top of it. And shout out to Sandy Diller on her design team because her card where she made a conversion of the iron fence actually reminded me of this rainbow idea. My color scheme is soft pastels in keeping with the baby theme, but of course this could be done in traditional rainbow colors. Card size is up to you. I am doing a five inch by five and a half inch card. So I started with a piece of cardstock, 10 inches wide by five and a half inches tall, scored in the center for folding. And then I'm going to use our Border Blends trims set. And I've cut a couple of the trims out of a pastel yellow and then some of the postage stamp trims out of a pastel lavender. And I'm going to use those to decorate the inside of the card. I put the yellow ones on first, maybe about an inch up from the bottom. And then that way, when I add the purple ones, it will go over the top of the yellow. And I'm starting with the top and the bottom, then trimming the corners of the side pieces so that they're mitered and then gluing those on. Then I just repeat that process on the other side, and now I have the interior of the card with the borders all the way around. And then I've cut four more of those purple postage stamp borders to go on the front of the card. Switching now to the iron fence pop-up, I'm using the fence die itself. I've cut that twice. And then there is a die in the set that will cut the strip that's used to animate the iron fence. I've cut that and the sleeve but then I also cut that same strip multiple times to be the stripes of the rainbow. Because I'm doubling it up, I definitely want lightweight cardstock. So that is 65 pound cardstock, both for the white fences and for all of the rainbow stripes. So choosing a stripe to be the center of my rainbow, I'm going to find the fold line that's in that strip. And that fold line is going to align with the edge of the wide fence post. So I'm going to go ahead and coat the back of my rainbow stripe completely with adhesive. I like Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle. And then I'm going to use that fold line that's in the strip to align with the edge of the wide fence post. And then as far as up and down placement, I want that stripe to go right across those triangles in the middle of the fence. And then it's going to end somewhere over here in the other wide fence post. So it's basically going to be centered and then you can see here that on the left side, you've got the fold line right on the edge of the white fence post. And then on the right side, it travels into the wide fence post a little bit. Now, the reason I like to put the fold line right on the edge of the white fence post is that's where a fold is going to be in the finished mechanism anyway. Okay, choosing my next color, I'm going to once again find the fold line that's in the strip. And then I'm going to coat the back of that completely with adhesive. Now I am choosing to coat the back of the rainbow stripes with adhesive, even though I know that some of that glue is going to go through the fence and onto my mat underneath. So if you are doing like I am doing, make sure that you're working on a surface that you can easily clean or put maybe some scratch paper underneath your fence. It's also important that whatever glue you use, that when it dries, it is no longer tacky so that it will not be sticky under the fence in all the open areas. Now, your other option, if you don't like the idea of making a glue mess through your fence, is to go ahead and add the glue to the fence itself, and that way you can skip all the holes. For each subsequent stripe, I'm just finding the fold in it and then making sure the fold is aligned with the edge of the wide fence post and then just butting the stripes up next to each other. For this technique, there will be a total of six rainbow stripes. So I've added the two that are above the center stripe, and now I'm going to add three below it. So again, just doing the same exact thing, finding the fold in the strip, coating the back with adhesive, making sure that the fold line lines up with the edge of the wide post, and that the strip itself is butted up next to the one next to it, and then just continue on until I've completed my rainbow. Okay, I have my six stripes on, and now you can see as I pick that up, the mess that I've made on my mat, I will clean that later. And now I'm going to trim off the top of the rainbow next to the edge of the last stripe. So I'm just going to use scissors for that. If you wanted to, you could get your trimmer out. I find it's pretty easy just to hug the edge of that strip to go ahead and cut off all of the excess fence at the top. Okay, so I can see the fold in the piece. That's where I folded the little foot on all of those stripes. 
And then that is the end where I need to get a hole put back in the fence again to be able to animate it. So it's usually this triangle right here that you put the mechanism through. So that's where I need to add my slot. So it doesn't have to be the full triangle. You could cut out the full triangle if you wanted to. But in this case for a rainbow, I'm just going to make it into a slot. So I'm using my craft knife for that. I'm starting at the left edge of that triangle right up next to the fence post and just cutting a wide slot using my craft knife. The fold on the left side of the fence, that was easy because all of those stripes had a fold in them already. The other end of the stripes, however, do not have a fold score line from the die. So I'm going to have to make that myself. So taking something like a small embossing stylus would work or anything you have to score with, I'm just going to run along the edge of that fence post down onto those stripes. And that will just make it a little easier to get a nice crisp fold across there to be the right side of the rainbow. From here, it's just usual assembly like you were doing the iron fence. So one of the stripes will be the mechanism piece. For that one, I'm going to find the little fold. And I usually choose a color that is the same as the one in the rainbow that has the slot in it. Then I've got the piece that is the sleeve. That one has folds on both sides so that it can fold over on top of itself. So using my glue to seal up that sleeve, the idea is to make sure that it is quite loose and freely sliding on the arm. So when you put the arm through it, you shouldn't have any resistance to just sliding back and forth. And I usually like to have it so that the seam is down. So I'm going to flip that around so that the seam is down. That's the side I'm going to glue to the card. Now from underneath the piece, I'm going to get the tab through the slot that I cut. So just the tab itself is going to come through the slot and onto the front of the rainbow. Then when I turn the piece over, the other end of the arm should now come basically to the other end of the piece. And it's just the area of the wide fence post itself that needs the glue because it's only that section that that arm is going to glue down into. And so just getting it and pinching it into place. And the sleeve is just somewhere on the back right now. Okay, this tab, I'm going to fold that down towards the center of the rainbow. So make sure that it's pointed towards the center of the rainbow. Then I'm going to add the glue on top and then keeping it nice and flat, I'm going to close the wide fence post down onto that exposed adhesive. And then that's going to pick up that tab so that as the card opens, it's going to pull the tab, pull the arm through the slot and make the rainbow arc up. Now, since I used a strong glue, that will probably hold no problem. However, just for an extra little bit of insurance, I'm going to go ahead and throw a staple through that tab so that it is attached permanently and can't pull off of there. And I will just cover the staple in the finished card with a cloud. Okay, so I have one rainbow ready for the card and now I'm going to work on this second one. And that assembly is going to be identical to the first one. So I'm just going to repeat exactly what I did. If you need to see it again, you can just rewind and watch the first one, but I'm using the same colors, the same method to make a second rainbow. My card has room for two rainbows. Now I could put them both here on the right side of the card or I can flip one over and install it on the left side of the card. And now for me with these pastel colors, it didn't matter to me what order the stripes went. If you were doing traditional rainbow colors, then you may want to pay attention to your stripe order so that the mechanism is on the left for one of the rainbows and on the right for the other one. Okay, I'm going to coat the back of that fence post with adhesive. Then I'm going to butt it right up to the fold of the card, wherever I want the rainbow to go. And then I'm going to close the card against that exposed adhesive. And what that's going to do is it's just going to attach that left fence post to the card. And it's actually attaching it on the other side of the fold. So as I open the card, it's going to bring the rainbow over to the other side. But then I can, oops, I guess I did not wait long enough for my glue to set up. Let me try that again. So it's going to move it to the other side. And then let me just hold that for a second so I can show. In the finished position, the rest of the rainbow will be on the right side of the card. So it's just the fence post that ends up across the fold on the other side. The position of the sleeve is important that you don't have it slid too far to the left because that will impede the fence from being able to arch all the way open. So I would suggest just using that second small fence post as the edge of your sleeve, as you see here. And it is actually only the sleeve that gets adhesive. So no other part of this fence gets glued to the card. It is only the sleeve. 
So I add my strong adhesive to the sleeve. I'm going to keep everything in position while I close the right side of the card against that exposed adhesive. So now what that's going to do is move that rainbow over to the right side of the card because the sleeve is going to be glued down and it's going to anchor it. But the rainbow itself can move so that arm can slide through that sleeve and arch the fence up as the card opens. So that's how that mechanism works. You can see it there from the side. Okay, the bottom rainbow is going to be on the left side of the card. So I start out by adding my adhesive all over the wide fence post, just like I did with the upper one. I'm going to butt it up to the fold and close the card against that exposed adhesive. So that's going to put that wide fence post on the right side of the fold because I want the rainbow on the left. And as I open it, I can see already that I didn't get it very straight, so I'm going to take a second to move it. That is one nice thing about using glue. Okay, so looking here at the back of the fence slash rainbow, I'm going to once again figure out my sleeve position. So this time I'm sliding to the right, but I don't want to slide any further than the second skinny fence post. That's the edge that I want that sleeve to be against. Then I add my glue all over the sleeve. I'm going to keep everything nice and flat on this right side of the card. Close the card against the exposed adhesive. And just like with the upper rainbow, what that's going to do is it's going to move the rainbow to the other side of the fold because the sleeve is going to anchor it there. But the arm can slide through the sleeve to arc the rainbow up as the card opens. Okay, and there you have it, a double staggered rainbow card, this time in a baby theme, but certainly that can be done in any colors for any theme. Okay, you've heard the term stash diving. Well, I'm going die diving. I am going to dive into my dies to find ones that have clouds. And I like the landscape scene that has some nice big solid clouds, and then the outdoor scene, which has two stitched clouds. And then I'm also going to use a circle from our crosshatch circles and the sun from our landscape scene. And if you don't have these specific dies, I am sure you can find something in your stash that would give you a similar look. So clouds are found in all sorts of die sets. Look around and see what you have. But what I'm going to do when I do my clouds is anything that I want to be on the side of the rainbow that is sliding, I need to make sure that those are smaller clouds and that I'm attaching them actually to the sliding rainbow not to the back of the card, because I don't want that to be a catch point. I just have to make sure that I leave room for the clouds to travel when the card closes. So I'm using small ones here, only attached to the rainbow so that the clouds slide as well, but that they don't slide all the way out of the card. So that's just an important consideration for the edges of your card where you've got the sliding rainbow. You don't wanna make catch points. You wanna leave room for things to close. Now for covering the staple, those clouds can be glued down to the card. The only consideration there is that you don't cross the fold where the staple is. So just cover the staple itself, but keep the cloud next to, but not crossing the fold so that it doesn't get creased. Now I just add more clouds throughout the sky and that circle and sun combo, which is going to be where I'll sign the card. To decorate the tops of the rainbows, I'm going to use our Baby Charms die set and our Beach Charms die set. For the baby blocks, the piece that has the four connected squares, I cut that one out of the purple. And then for each of the letter parts of the block, I used double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the cardstock before die cutting so that both the perimeter border and the letters would be stickers. For adding embellishments to the rainbow, the best bet is to figure out where you'd like it to go and then just add the adhesive in the center. And that way the embellishment doesn't curve with the rainbow, it just sits on top. So it's still going to flatten down, no problem when the card is closed, but it's not going to arc over the top of the rainbow. Okay, now I'm going to convert the Beach Charms Flamingo into a stork. And I'm starting with this piece, which is the overlay for the beach ball. And if I just trim off, the two sides leaving a little bit, it will look like the tie at the top of a cloth bag. I cut the flamingo charm out of orange cardstock and I'm going to trim off the charm hole at the top. And then for a beak, I'm going to use the overlay of the flip flops from that die set. So I'll trim that in just a little bit. But first I'm going to work on my white flamingo charm. So for that one, I do want to take advantage of the stencil feature that's built into the die. 
So keeping the paper in the die after die cutting, I'm going to use a black pen to add the eye, and then I've got a light gray pen to trace the outline of the wing. Once again, I'm not using this as a charm, so I can take my scissors and remove the charm hole. And then while I'm in the business of cutting, I'll go ahead and trim off the legs of the white one. And then I'm also going to trim off the beak of the white one. For the wing, I'm going to color it in with a light gray marker. I happen to be using a Copic C0, but you could use any light gray marker or pencil. Next, I glue the white stork over the top of the orange one, just lining everything up. Okay, my stork is coming together, but now I need to work on that beak. So the flamingo beak is a little short for a stork. So what I'm going to do is trim off most of the flamingo's beak, leaving a little stub of orange so that I have something to glue my new beak to. And then the new beak is going to be made from those flip-flop overlay. So I'll take that left side and trim it right at that first elbow. And then I'm just going to use that piece off the left side to be the new beak. So a little dot of glue on what's left of the flamingo's beak. And then I can glue the stork beak to it. And of course I can change the angle to whatever looks nice. I want to have that coming out far enough that when I go and glue it onto the cloth sack, that the sack will be hanging out, you know, away from the, the stork a little bit. And then to add the bundle of joy to the stork's beak, I just need a little bit of glue at the top and then just press the beak to it. So there you have it, one repurposed flamingo beach ball and flip-flops into a stork with a little bundle of joy, and then I can glue that to the upper rainbow. So once again, I really just want the adhesive up the middle, so I'm going to put it on the back of the stork, just right up the middle and the leg, and then I can just pinch that to the rainbow so that the stork itself is going to stay flat even when the card is open. It's not going to bend with the rainbow, but then it will nicely pop down when the card is closed. Okay, let's talk about making rainbows using our circles crosshatch die set. So this die set includes seven circles. Four of them have the crosshatch pattern, and then three of them have just a score line in them. And what I'm using first is the third largest crosshatch or second smallest. I don't know which way you'd say it. And then I've cut that out of one color and then I'm going to cut the next size down out of a different color and then glue those two together. These are going to be the two smallest bands in my rainbow and I've left myself the smallest die. I still have one circle that's smaller than both of those to go in the middle to cut out the inside arc. So I'm just going to line that up over the set so that it is perfectly centered or as perfectly as I can get it with, with my eye. And then I'm just going to use temporary tape to hold that in place and roll that through. Now my die cutting machine that I'm using today is my Spellbinders Platinum 6. Our dies will work in any of your major die cutting machines. So now it's just a matter of making donuts and moving through the colors. So I go up the next biggest circle and then I put the second smallest circle in the middle somewhere. And then that's going to give me a donut that's a little bit bigger than the donut I already have. And then I can glue those two donuts together. So now I'm just going to go up and make bigger and bigger donuts. So as my outer circle die gets bigger, my inner circle die to make the donut hole can also get a little bit bigger. You just need to have at least two die sizes in between them so that you have something to glue to, if that makes sense. Okay, so now I've got my pink ring that I'm going to go up to the next size large circle, pick something for the interior donut hole. It does not have to be perfectly centered because when I glue, glue those pieces together, then I'm going to make sure that it's centered. So the, the inside donut hole opening does not have to be perfectly in the center because I'm going to use the outside edges to line everything up. And then my final donut. Once again, I think it's easiest to add the adhesive around the interior opening and then around the exterior of the one that I'm gluing to it. And then just get those centered nicely and glued together. The largest crosshatch circle measures four and an eighth in diameter, which means I need to go to two and a sixteenth to cut it in half. So just putting that on my trimmer and cutting it in half, and now I have two rainbows. I repeated that process a second time and cut the other circle set in half. So now I have four rainbows for the front of my card. And I started with one at the top, 
and then I'm gluing the ones onto the side and then I'll finish out with one at the bottom and for that one I use the largest clouds the ones out of the landscape scene at the base of the rainbow. Those layered rainbows are making the left side of the card when it's open just feel a lot heavier than the right side. So what I'm going to do to balance the weight is just to add another panel of cardstock to the back of the card. Definitely optional, that's just personal preference. I really like a card like this to feel balanced in my hand and I don't like that right side feeling flimsier than the left side. And then I finished out the front of the card with the onesie out of the baby charm set and then our welcome word set. So then the finished card says, welcome baby. To mail a card like this, I would use an A7 envelope. So this one's five inches wide by five and a half inches tall. So it'll fit nicely in that envelope. I would plan on putting the extra ounce or non-machinable stamp on it since it is rigid because of those rainbows on the front. My goal with these designer challenge videos every month is just to spark an idea. So this is a way to take the iron fence pop-up and convert it into a rainbow. And then where you go from there, well, that's completely up to you. So definitely change out those colors, change out the theme. Maybe it's going to be a nice sympathy card or pet sympathy. Lots of ways that you can go with this technique. If you would like to see what our designers have done this month for the baby and wedding challenge, then definitely check out the blog post. You'll find the link in the description box below. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.